Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters. I'm your host, Mitch. Glad to have you here. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about Commander on a budget. Today's episode is going to be a $50 deck tech. When I say $50, I mean that is an overall deck cost. Both shipping and commanders that are $10 or less are going to be included in that cost, but basic lands will not be. Decks on this channel are built to be fun, inexpensive, and focused. If you want to learn more about what a focused commander deck is, check out this video here. On this deck tech, I'm going to take you through its strategy, the tactics, and how this deck wins. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. And while you're at it, subscribe and review our podcast as well. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all of their support. Today's deck text can be built around Galta Primal Hunger. Galta is a 12-12 Elder Dinosaur or Trample that costs 10 green green. It costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. So Galta is obviously a force to be reckoned with being a 12-12. And by having other creatures in play, we can reduce its cost. Now the problem is that if we can't keep creatures on the board, Galta's going to be too expensive for us to cast. One board wipe could completely set us back and destroy our strategy. So instead of just having low-cost, high-power creatures, we want creatures that are durable. But we still want those creatures to be low-cost and high-power, so how are we going to do that? And the answer to that is, of course, vehicles. Yeah, that's right. Next to this giant dinosaur, we've got cars driving around and stuff. Having those cars in play and piloted makes this dinosaur cost less. Magic can be pretty weird sometimes, and that's one of the reasons I love it. Anyways, what's our strategy for this deck? We're going to get those hard-to-kill creatures out and then have them pilot vehicles for Galta. Vehicles are hard to kill because most creature-based board wipes are at sorcery speed. So if we just need vehicles as creatures on our turn, they're going to dodge the vast majority of board wipes. And then how do we win with this deck? We're going to use Galta's power to our advantage and dominate in multiple ways. 12 power for just 2 mana is absolutely absurd and we can use it in a lot of different ways to be very effective. As with all Commander's Quarters decks, I'm going to take you through 10 different tactics that show you how the deck works and how we're going to win with it. So let's start things off with tact number 1, start your engines. First up, we've got three Mandorks that each cost a green and can essentially tap for a green with Llanowar Elves, Elvish Mystic, and Arbor Elf. Up next, there's Whisper of the Wilds, which can tap for a green, but if we've got a creature that has a power of four or greater, it can tap for green green. The vast majority of the time in this deck, that's going to be the case. And then there's Llanowar Tribe, which can tap for green green green. It also has three powers, so essentially just on its own, it can account for six mana for Galta. Next up, we're running some land ramp with Search for Tomorrow, Sakura Tribe Elder, and Rampant Growth. Search for Tomorrow says search your library for a basic land card and put it onto the battlefield, and it's got to spend two for a green. Sakura so Tribe Elder we can sack to get any basic land into play tapped, and Rampant Growth can do the same. And then there's Spring Bloom Druid, which makes us sacrifice one land to get two basics into play tapped. Up next is Nissa's Pilgrimage, which gives us one forest into play tapped and one into our hand, but we get two forests into our hand if we've got Spell Mastery. And then Growth from the Ashes gets us one basic into play untapped or two if we kicked it. Next up we've got some Mana Rocks that can also be creatures with Guardian Idol and Cultivator's Caravan. Guardian Idol comes into play tapped and taps for a color, so we can also pay two to make it a 2-2 until end of turn. A card like this one that actually doesn't seem like a lot at first glance can actually be really big for the deck. Like vehicles, we can make it temporarily into a creature. So again, most creature-based board wipes aren't going to touch it. So we can use this hard-to-kill creature to pilot a good amount of our vehicles. And then Cultivator's Caravan is the first of our vehicles. It taps for one man of any color, and it's got crew three. And again, when we crew that creature, it's a 5-5, which reduces the cost of our commander by five, which is huge. But of course, this isn't the only vehicle that we're running. So now let's move on to tactic number two, Cheap Rides. First up, there's Consulate Dreadnought, which just costs one, and it's a 7-11, but it has Crew 6. The thing about vehicles that is kind of weird is that they can actually crew each other. So we can crew one thing into another into another, which greatly reduces the cost of Galta. Up next, we've got two vehicles that cost two with Smuggler's Copter and Heart of Kirin. Smuggler's Copter, better known as Looter Scooter, is a 3-3 flyer that when it attacks or blocks, we can draw a card if we do discard a card, and it's got Crew 1. Whereas Heart of Kirin is a 4-4 with Flying and Vigilance that has Crew 3. Next up, we've got three vehicles that cost three with Daredevil Dragster, Sleek Schooner, and Renegade Freighter. Each of these have four power, and Daredevil Dragster has crew two, Sleek Schooner has crew one, and Renegade Freighter has crew two. Renegade Freighter can actually get bigger when it attacks. It gets plus plus one and gains trample until end of turn. Again, the more power to reduce for Galta, the better. So let's move on to some even bigger vehicles. Let's go over them now in tactic number three, Luxury Vehicles. First up, we've got some vehicles that cost four with Untethered Express, Fleet World Cruiser, and Bomat Bazaar Barge. Untethered Express has Crew 1, and it's a 4-4 with Trample, but it can get even bigger because each time it attacks, we get a plus one, plus one counter on it. 
And then Fleet Rail Cruiser actually starts off as a 5-3 of Trample because when it comes into play, it becomes an artifact creature until end of turn, and it's got Crew 2. And then Bowmat Bazaar Barge is simply a 5-5 with Crew 3, but when it comes into play, we draw a card. Next up, there's Oval Chase Dragster, which cost 4 is a 6-1 with Crew 1, and it's got Trample and Haste. And then Iron Tread Crusher is a vanilla 6-6 with Crew 3. Next up, there's Enchanted Carriage, which is a 4-4 that costs 5, and it's got Crew 2, but when it comes into play, we get 2-1-1 White Mouse Creature Tokens. Next up, we've got 3 more vehicles that each cost 5 with Ballista Charger, Sky Sovereign Console Flagship, and Eridara Express. Ballista Charger is a 6-6 with Crew 3, and when it attacks, it deals 1 damage to our creature or player. The console flagship is a 6-5 flyer with crew 3, and it has when it enters the battlefield or attacks, it deals 3 damage to our creature or planeswalker and opponent controls. And then the Eridara Express is a giant 8-6 with Menace, and it's got crew 4. But finally, we've got an even bigger vehicle at 6 mana with Demolition Stomper. It's a crew 5-10-7 that can't be blocked by creatures with power 2 or less. Again, to get Galt out, we just need the vehicles crewed, but at a certain point, we will be attacking with them. Now, we've gone through a couple cards that can crew our vehicles, but we're gonna need more. So now let's move on to tactic number four, go ahead. First up there's Genju of the Cedars, which says Enchant Forest, pay two, Enchanted Forest becomes a 4-4 until end of turn. It's still a land. And when Enchanted Forest is put into a graveyard, you may return Genju of the Cedars from your graveyard to your hand. And then there's Chimeric Mass, which costs X and enters the battlefield with X charge counters on it. By paying one until end of turn, Chimeric Mass becomes a construct artifact creature with this creature's power and toughness are equal to the number of charge counters on it. So basically it's an XX that can be a creature where we want it to be for just one mana. Again, both of these can be hard for opponents to kill because we can choose when they are creatures. Other creatures that are hard to kill are indestructible ones such as Predator Ooze and Darksteel Juggernaut. Predator Ooze starts off as a 1-1, but when it attacks, we get a plus one plus one counter on it. And then whenever a creature dealt damage by it dies this turn, we put a plus one plus one counter on Predator Ooze. And then Darksteel Juggernaut can actually be a huge threat in this deck. Its power and toughness are each equal to the number of artifacts we control, and it attacks each combat of Fable. Again, we're running a ton of artifacts in this deck with all of our vehicles, so this thing can get huge. And actually, if we just want to have it crew a vehicle instead of attack, we can do that before combat. Both of these can get huge and can really reduce the cost of Galta on their own. And again, because they're indestructible, they can be really hard for our opponents to get off the board. Next up, we've got two creatures that can regenerate with Hunted Troll and Sylvos Rogue Elemental. When Hunted Troll comes into play, target opponent puts four 1-1 blue fairy creature tokens with flying onto the battlefield, and it has pay a green regenerate Hunted Troll. Now, giving one of our opponents four creatures isn't great, but an 8-4 that can regenerate is pretty great. And then Sylvos is an 8-5 with Trample that does cost 6, but it can also regenerate for a green. Now, regeneration isn't as good as Indestructible, but we'll take it. And actually, perhaps the best card in this deck is one that does regenerate. And that would be the Golden Pig, which is our number one card out of our 99. And the Golden Pig of this deck is Moss Ridge Troll. It's a 5-5 troll that costs 5 green green. It says if Moss Ridge Troll would be destroyed, regenerate it. And then tap any number of untapped creatures you control other than Moss Ridge Troll with total power of 10 or greater. Moss Ridge Troll gets plus 20 plus 20 until end of turn. So a few things as to why this card is absolutely amazing in this deck. First off, it's really hard for opponents to kill. Yes, regeneration is not as good as indestructibility, but when it's free, it's pretty close. A 5-5 five, five for 7 is not great at all, but a 25-25 25, 25 for 7 is absurd. With this deck, it's very easy for us to tap a total of 10 power to make this into a 25-25. That's more than twice as big as Galta. With this in play, essentially Galta will never cost more than green green. And since it can have more power than Galta, it kind of just actually trumps Galta in certain situations. There are a lot of cards in this deck that actually benefit us based on the creature's power, and this really benefits us to say the least. Now we'll get to those cards later, but there are many reasons that this is the golden pick of the deck. But we've still got a few more hard to kill creatures to go over. So let's go over them now in tactic number five, make my day. First up, there's Fido Titan, which is a 7-2, and when it dies, we return to the battlefield tapped under its owner's control at the beginning of their next upkeep. So essentially, this thing is extremely hard to get rid of, and it pretty much permanently reduces the cost of our commander by 7. Next up, there's Metalwork Colossus, which is a 10-10 that costs 11, but most of the time, it's going to be free to cast. It costs X less to cast, where X is the total converted mana cost of non-creature artifacts we control. Again, our vehicles aren't creatures until we crew them, so don't crew them and just cast this for free and then crew them. On top of that, we can actually keep getting this back by sacrificing two artifacts we can get it back from our graveyard to our hand. And finally, there's Phyrexian Processor, which is an artifact that costs four, and when it comes into play, we can pay any amount of life. By paying four and tapping it, we put an XX Black Meaning Creature token onto the battlefield where X is the amount of life we paid. So this is a very flexible card, and we can choose the amount of life that is most beneficial for the situation that we're in. We can use it to make creatures that can crew, or just use it to make big beaters. It really depends on the situation. But even though most of our creatures are pretty hard to kill, we still need some ways to protect our board. So let's go on to tactic number six, stay where you are. First up, there's Swiftfoot Boots, which is going to give Galta Hexproof and Haste. Both things are great on Galta, as well as some of their big creatures for obvious reasons. Next up, there's Rapid Vigor, which is going to regenerate each creature we control. For just two mana, this is a fantastic effect that can really save our board. 
But perhaps an even bigger effect comes from Soul of New Phyrexia, which has pay 5, permanent 2 control gain, indestructible until end of turn. We can also pay 5 and exile it from our graveyard to get the same effect. And finally, this Joriel Empress of Beasts, which has pay 2 and a green and tap it, discard 2 cards until end of turn, all lands target player controls are 3 3 creatures that are still lands. So this is a flexible card that we can use in multiple ways. First off, if we turn all of our lands into creatures, it's going to reduce the cost of Galta by a ton. We can also use this to finish out a game and swing out with our lands if we need to. But perhaps most importantly, and why it's in this tactic, is because it is board wipe insurance. If someone's going to cast a board wipe, they better know that we're going to turn their lands into creatures in response. So basically, they're just going to be blowing up all their lands, and most players aren't willing to do that. Now outside of protecting our own things, we need ways to deal with our opponent's things too. So now let's move on to tactic number 7, out with you. First up, we've got Reclamation Sage, which when it comes into play, we destroy target Artifact or Enchantment. And then there's Thrashing Brontodon, which can do the same if we pay 1 and sacrifice it. Finally, there's Wicker Bow Elder, which comes into play with 1 minus 1 minus 1 counter on it, and by paying a green to remove it, we destroy target Artifact or Enchantment. But how do we actually get to all these great cards that we've already talked about? Let's find out in tactic number 8, Powerful Draw. First up, there's Harmonize, which is going to draw us 3 cards for 4 mana. And then we've got Mouth to Feed, which can help us out in multiple ways. First off, Mouth says create a 3-3 green Hippo creature token, so that Hippo can crew vehicles as well as reduce Galta's cost. And then Feed says draw a card for each creature you control power 3 or greater. Again, we're going to have a ton of creatures on the field, so this can be huge. And then Shamanic Revelation just straight up draws us a card for each creature we control, and it's got Ferocious, you gain 4 life for each creature you control power 4 or greater. So this is going to draw us a ton of cards and gain us a lot of life. But some even bigger draw spells for this deck are the ones that focus on one creature's power. Life's Legacy says, as additional cost to cast it, sacrifice a creature, draw cards equal to the sacrificed creature's power. Although it might be counterintuitive, sacrificing Galta isn't really that big of a deal for us. As long as we're set up properly, most of the time Galta is just going to cost us green green to cast no matter how many times it dies. So sacrificing it to draw 12 cards is pretty huge. Momentous Fall does the exact same thing, but it's at instant speed and it's going to gain us life equal to the creature's toughness. And then Soul's Majesty actually doesn't require us to sacrifice a creature, but we do have the target one. Now these three are great draw spells, but they can be somewhat risky because we have to choose a creature, and if that creature's dealt with, we're in trouble. Most of the time, though, we're going to be fine and this isn't an issue. But some even better draw spells come from ones that don't make us choose a creature. Garrick Primal Hunter has three loyalty abilities, but we're really just going to focus on the one that is minus three. It says draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. Garrick's going to die, but that's fine. Again, drawing 12 cards for five mana is huge. And then Return of the Wild Speaker is actually a fantastic draw spell or finisher. It's an instant that says choose one, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control, or non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until end of turn. And finally, there's Rich Card's Expertise, which says draw cards equal to the greatest power among creatures you control. You may cast a card with converted mana cost five or less from your hand without paying its mana cost. So for six mana, again, drawing 12 cards and then casting a card for free is huge. But sometimes instead of drawing cards, we need to get certain cards back. So now let's move on to tactic number nine, Restoration. First up, there's Once in Future, which is going to get us two cards back to our hand at instant speed. And then there's Creeping Renaissance, which says, choose a permanent type, return all cards of the chosen type from your graveyard to your hand, and we can flash it back for five green green. Again, we're running a ton of permanents in this deck, so either getting back creatures or artifacts can be huge for us, depending on the situation that we're in. Now, all this is great, but how do we actually finish our opponents off? You know, outside of just smacking them with a 12-12 Trampling Commander that can be really hard to get rid of, and we can recast for just green green pretty much all the time. Anyways, let's find out those other ways in tactic number 10, Hit and Run. First up, there's Sylvan Awakening, which says, Until your next turn, all lands you control become 2-2 elemental creatures with Reach, Indestructible, and Haste. They're still lands. So this can be a finisher, but can also just be a great way to pilot a ton of vehicles at once if we need to. And then there's Overwhelming Stampede, which says, Until end of turn, creatures you control gain Trample and get plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. So again, if Galt is out, that's going to be plus 12 plus 12. But if Moss Bridge Troll is out and pumped, it's going to be plus 25 plus 25. You can see how this can get out of hand very quickly, and we can easily win from there. And then Dragon Throne of Tarkir is essentially a repeatable version of Overwhelming Stampede. It has pay 2 and tap it, other creatures you control gain trample and get plus X plus X until end of turn where X is this creature's power. Next up there's Feed the Pack, which says at the beginning of your end step you may sacrifice a non-token creature. If you do, put X2-2 two, two green wolf creature tokens onto the battlefield where X is the sacrifice creature's toughness. So basically, sack Galta and make 12 2-2s two, with a total power of 24. Then recast Galta for green green next turn, and do the same thing. Maybe throw in an Overwhelming Stampede, and everyone has fun. And then there's Death's Presence, which says, Whenever a creature you control dies, put X plus one plus one counters on target creature you control, where X is the power of the creature that died. So say Galta happens to die by either our opponent's hand or our own, we can put 12 plus one plus one counters on another one of our creatures. That can even be a vehicle if it's crude. Anyways, then we have an even bigger creature that reduces Galta's cost by 12. Commander Tax is basically meaningless as long as we can keep moving those counters around. And obviously, if something else big dies, we can put those counters on Galta and potentially make it a one-shot kill. But another way to make it an easy one-shot kill is Fire Shrieker. 
Fire Shrieker simply says, equip creature as double strike. So Galta, a 12-12, swinging for double strike would be 24 damage, which is yes, over 21. This deck is very resilient, and there are plenty of ways that we can kill our opponents. But now that we've gone through the spells in this deck, let's go on to the mana base. First up, we're going to be running three cycling lands with Tranquil Thicket, Slippery Cars, and Desert the Indomitable. Next up, we're running two lands that can ramp us with Myriad Landscape and Blighted Woodland. And then there's Mosswort Bridge, which has Hideaway, and we can pay a green and tap it to play the exiled card without paying its mana cost if creatures we control have total power of 10 or greater. Next up, there's Rogue's Passage, which we can pay 4 and tap to make target creature unblockable this turn. And then there's Mistress Factory, which we can pay 1 to make it a 2 2 until the end of the turn, so this can help with crewing. And then there's Treetop Village, Mobilized District, and Dread Statuary, which can also turn to creatures so they can help us with crewing. And the rest of our mana base is going to be very simple with 25 fourths. And now that we've gone through every single card in this deck, let's do a quick price check. A quick reminder that our deck costs are calculated using TCG Player Optimization, optimizing with even heavily played and damaged cards because those cards need a home too. The average Galta Primal Hunger EDH Rec deck is going to set you back $258.28. Our deck is going to be much more affordable, coming in at $49.83. Again, the price of this deck is the price that I got for it on the day that I'm recording. If you want to see a breakdown of this deck's cost, check out the link in the description. Keep in mind that prices can and will fluctuate and change over time. But with these deck costs, I want to be as transparent as I possibly can. Again, Commander's Quarters decks are about to be tuned and focused within their budget, but there are always ways that we can improve on them. So let's go through some reasonable upgrades now to see what some of those ways just might be. First up, let's add in Reliquary Tower by taking out a Forest. Next up, let's add in Teamer Sabretooth by taking out Metalwork Colossus. And then let's add in Spearbreaker Behemoth by taking out Rapid Vigor. Next up, let's add in Pathbreaker Ibex by taking out Dragon Throne of Tarkir. And then let's add in Beastmaster Ascension by taking out Feed the Pack. Finally, let's add in Greater Good by taking out Soul's Majesty. And now it's my turn to hear from you. So in the comments below, let me know what you think about this deck and what you think about the commander in general. And make sure you're following us on social media for more updates and sneak peeks on future episodes. Again, a huge thank you to my patrons who helped make this show possible. I truly couldn't do any of this without your support. If you want to support this channel directly, consider becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, including being able to vote on future commanders for deck tacks. There are even tiers where you get your own personalized deck tech dedicated to you. You can check out all the Patreon tiers and rewards at patreon.com slash commanders quarters. If you haven't already, make sure that you like and subscribe to the channel. Here at the Commander's Quarters, we're all about budget commander. So while you're at it, go ahead and check out some of our other types of episodes. And with that, I'm out of here. Thanks again and have a good one.